it's literally like the end of the Blair Witch Project, where the dude is standing in the corner and the girl is going looking for him. Let's not go there, folks. Hello there, folks, and how is it going? And welcome back to another video. Now, you're probably all sitting there thinking, are we, are we in his sitting room? What the hell are we doing there? Don't worry at all. This is, I'm just doing my intro here so we can uh, get ourselves sorted. Now, today's video is going to be all about photographing the Milky Way. Thankfully, the Milky Way is in all its glory in the summertime. And we are very lucky here in the southwest of Portugal where we live. It's very dark skies here, so it's really beautiful. And tonight is, there's no moon and it's really, really clear outside. And I figured let's get out and photograph the Milky Way because it has been ages. Now, if you follow along on Instagram at all, uh, you may have seen on my stories that I've been posting uh, stories. <laughs> uh, I've essentially been outside, just outside the door, practicing. And so in today's video, the whole idea is to photograph the Milky Way. I want to take a series of Milky Way images using the uh, Skyguider Pro that I have down here. Look at that pan action from Senior Spielbergo on the camera here. And uh, so the whole idea of today's video is, because I have never done it before, where I take a series of images of the Milky Way and then I stack those images and then I kind of bring them onto a foreground element. And uh, as you'll see, the foreground element is just like a, an abandoned kind of ruin that's down by the beach, which is essentially where we're going to head to now. So let's pack up our gear and let's jump in the car and let's go have ourselves a nighttime adventure. Let's get to it. So here we are in the darkness um, and this the eagle-eyed among you may recognize, if you scroll way down on Instagram, you're gonna see pretty much this same picture that I'm looking to recreate tonight. Uh, it's this ruin, you probably really can't see it in the background, but I'll pop up some examples uh, for you here uh, in just a moment. And essentially, I want the Milky Way to be coming out of the broken roof of the house. So that's what we're ultimately looking to do. Now, tip number one is to, when you arrive at a location, it's dark. Obviously, you do a lot of planning, your photo pills and all that kind of fun stuff. But when you arrive at location, it's obviously going to be very, very dark. So a good tip is to, when you want to kind of hone in on your composition, is to just set your ISO to like crazy high. And that way then you can take pictures that are only really maybe about 10 seconds long and it just makes it a bit easier so you're not waiting around for one minute or 30 second exposures to keep ticking away and you're like moving ever so slightly. So bang the ISO up crazy high because these pictures are just ultimately just gonna get deleted essentially. And um, so that's what we're going to do first. And that will then uh, enable us to hone in our composition a bit quicker and then we'll be able to just see, you know, hopefully the Milky Way is in the right place and all that kind of fun stuff. So I am gonna take this picture. I've got my ISO set to 6400, I'm at 2.8. I've got my 18 mil Zeiss Batis on and I'm exposing that for about 10 seconds or so. And um, I could probably even go a bit less. I'm not even gonna worry about focus or any of that stuff. It's literally just to see in the dark. So let's take this picture and let's see what we can do. I'm going to move forwards a little bit and I'm going to then turn to tilt so I ultimately face the camera because the Milky Way is coming up and out to the left here. So I want to try and capture that as, you know, as much as I can. Um, so we're going to move forwards a small bit and then we're going to look a bit to the left. We're going to take the shot and then maybe we might be kind of pretty much ready to rock and roll. So let's move forwards and let's get to it. So I have taken a bunch of different pictures and you would have seen them already uh, if I remember to put them on the screen, of course. But another tip that I have for you uh, this evening is to consistently check the back of the camera, zoom in and be like, hyper critical about your focus when it comes to the stars and also very aware of how long the image is exposing for. So I took a picture that I'll pop up on the screen for you now as I ramble away here uh, and it was a 30 second exposure but when we go into the image we'll see that it was ever so slightly trailing a small bit and that's just because I had I was at 2.8 
the ISO was crazy high and it was just too long of an exposure essentially. Changed things down a bit now, I'm at about 20 seconds, I've even come to about 3.5, maybe try to get a bit more sharpness in the image. This lens is gorgeous but you know, always nice to stop down a little bit when you can. So I'm gonna fire away another shot now and and then I will pop that up on the screen and we can then see the difference. Even the difference that 10 seconds has made to the roundness of the stars is ultimately what we're looking to get super duper round. So let's have a look at this one. Make sure your tor torch is off. So folks, what I'm gonna do now is I'm super happy with the composition and everything and I am gonna take a photograph for the foreground essentially, which is this ruined kind of house that we're looking at here. And I'm gonna just play around and I'm gonna run over with my light on in my phone and I'm gonna just do a bit of light paint and old school and uh, we'll see if we could do it. And I'm gonna run over there and Orla's gonna press the button so it's gonna technically be her photograph, but let's, uh, <laughs> let's not get into the laws of it, okay. <laughs> So that looks really, really nice, super vibrant and really bright. What I'm gonna do is take another one and I'm just going to kind of illuminate all of this foreground. I'm probably gonna end up cropping most of it out anyway, but I want to have it still illuminated in the foreground just so I have it. So let's do that now. <laughs> So that's really worked out very, very nice. They look very nice on the back of the camera. Now this whole image is essentially going to be a composite anyway, and that's all cool. So what I'm gonna do is head back to the car, get the Skyguider Pro, I'm gonna set all of that up, and I'm actually gonna move to the other side of the building here to help protect against the wind, because my aim is to take I really want to try and take like maybe a three minute exposure, like a good few of them, so I can get as much detail out of the Milky Way as I can, and essentially then overlay that image to the one that we've just created here now. So let's go grab our gear and let's get shooting. So we have moved behind this building and we can see the Milky Way. I really wish you could see it here behind us. Maybe I could take a bit of video over here on the other lens, uh, the other camera at least. And, uh, but the Milky Way looks really, really gorgeous. And we are sheltered from the wind, which is really great. Lots of dog poo around, unfortunately. So I've got my bag set up over here. But the next tip we have to do is to polar align the Skyguider Pro, which is just over here. So I have the app. Uh, what's it called here again? It is called Polar Align Pro. And uh, oop, what I'll do is instead of trying to show it to you on the back of the camera or any of that stuff, I will just overlay uh, essentially what I'm looking at here now on the screen. And that's what I'm going to do now over here at the Skyguider Pro. So let's get Polar Aligned and let's get shooting. Now what we need to do is we are nicely lined up. So we have found our Ursa Major. So we need to then go off the last star in the pot and then we are going to type in polaris and then we are going to see that there which is essentially the last star of the handle of ursa minor now we are going to then find that in the skyguider pro and follow what it says on the app and then we are polar aligned and then we can actually start taking some photographs so let's do that first and uh, let's make sure we can see what we're seeing It's always handy to have an extra set of hands on uh, hand if you have them, i.e. Senior Spielbergo here. As you can see, we have moved to more of a Blair Witch kind of style camera shake uh, vibe. I had to take the ball head off because the other one, I have to hit it with a hammer in order right, so I can get it off the, the tripod. It's a whole thing. But anyway, as we were setting ourselves up here, Orla so rightly reminded me that this abandoned house, it's literally like the end of the Blair Witch Project, where the dude is standing in the corner and the girl is going looking for him. Let's not go there, folks. So, we, <laughs> we, we have set ourselves up, so we are essentially now going to turn off all of our lights. I'm going to just do a test shot just to make sure that everything's cool and we're still seeing the Milky Way and all that fun stuff. And then we are going to go ahead and then set ourselves up for success in terms of taking some long, long exposures. I have the intervalometer plugged in. 
So let's get shooting and let's see what happens. So, wow, holy moly. I just took a two and a half minute exposure and it's, it's absolutely gorgeous looking. Um, I am thrilled with that. I mean, even without the house in the foreground, it's still it's such a beautiful image. There is an incredible amount of detail in the uh, Milky Way. So what we are going to do now is essentially just set this up to take a whole bunch of pictures and then we are then gonna overlay them and stack them in post-processing. But let's take the pictures first. I have my intervalometer set just for anybody who is interested. I have it set with a delay of maybe about like half a second or so and then a three minute exposure and with then another one second delay in between. So that's if you're interested. So I'm gonna press the start button. And so me and Orla are gonna just chill, enjoy the sky and probably try not scare ourselves about the Blair Witch again. Um, so let's, uh, let's put this down here and hope we can do something. We just got the shit scared out of us talking about Blair Witch Project and then this crazy I, I, we, I don't know how to even describe it. I do. <laughs> Came from the fucking house behind us. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I don't know where that is. So I don't know. I really, really hope you're able to hear that on the <laughs> microphone. Uh, I'm so scared right now. So, wow, what an absolutely wonderful, wonderful time we're having here. Apart from getting terribly turned out, it was like a gecko that makes crazy squeaky noises from the shadows. Uh, but I have taken, uh, I think in total, maybe about six uh, pictures at three minutes each. Uh, three sixes are 18, so that's almost 20 minutes worth of exposure time of this Milky Way. And from what I can see on the back of the camera, I am thrilled. So next step is to take these pictures, bring them all onto the computer, and let's work some magic. So I'll see you back at the computer. Welcome friends to the ASMR Photography Studio. majesty of the night sky. I am absolutely thrilled with the final result that I came to with this image. It's exactly what I had set out to achieve and even exceeded the expectations that I had. One of the marvelous things about using a tool like the Sky Guider Pro that really enables you to dig details out of the Milky Way in a situation like this. I think it's one of my favorite Milky Way images that I have ever taken. I didn't really want to show any of the kind of post-processing part of the image just because the video is probably long enough and if you've made it this far fair play to you all but uh, I feel like my post-processing isn't necessarily the greatest in the world so I don't really kind of want to include any of that stuff needless to say I took a good while to get to this point I'm one that I am happy with but overall I really really love how this turned out and like I say the detail in the Milky Way is just oh wow it's just exquisite so I'm really really happy with it Well, we are back in the incredibly messy office and you guys would have just seen that image that I took. Uh, I'm super happy with it. But I neglected to record any kind of outro while I was out last night. Uh, so here it is. Um, I'm really, really happy with all of this. It's good. It was a good learning experience. And by the way, this shirt is incredibly loud, uh, but I love it. Uh, so it was a good learning experience, like super good learning experience. And it's always great to practice your uh, polar alignment which I have been doing uh, throughout the course of this week. And it's, uh, I think for me, when I zoomed into these images, the tracked images, it really showed that practice kind of paying off because it's a quite a fine, nuanced bit of detail that you need to make sure you get right. But anyway, if you like the video, folks, do please hit that like button. And if you fancy following along for more adventures like this one, by all means, hit that subscribe button. And I will see you on the next one. Take it easy, everybody. Cheers. Thank you.